In our earlier video, we had discussed the geographical details of the six Kula Parvatas, the seven Varshas, and the rivers from the Indian subcontinents. In this video, we are going to discuss the other geographical details from Mahabharat. Sanjay has described the Ilavrata region in more detail. In the Ilavrata region, between the Nila and Nishada mountains, lies the mountain Meru. Surrounding it are the four regions, that is Varshas, namely Bhadrashva, Ketumala, Jambudvipa, and Uttarakuru. Uttarakuru is mentioned as lying to the north of Meru and Ketumala to the west of Meru. Bhadrashwa is mentioned as lying to the east. Jambudvipa or the Jambu Khanda is mentioned as lying there itself, implicitly to the south of Meru. We have already identified Meru with the Pamir Mountains in our earlier video. It is a mountain knot where many mountain ranges like Tien Shan that is Nila and Kunlun Shan that is Nishadha join with the Himalayas. Mountain ranges radiate from the Pamir mountain complex in all four directions as shown in the figure. Bhadrashwa is then identifiable with the Tarim Basin to the east of Pamir. Tarim river flows through this region. Ketumala is identifiable with Tokharistan that is Tushar on the banks of the Oxus river that is Amu Darya. It consists of the Ayola Plains to the west of the Pamir mountain complex. Lying now in northern Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan and Tajikistan. On the south of the Nila mountains and the northern side of Meru are the sacred Uttarkurus. This Uttarkuru is identifiable with the Alai Valley or the Fergana Valley. The identification of Uttarkuru with Alai Valley is more suited if we consider the Alai mountains to its north as part of the Nila mountains, that is Tien Shan. The identification with Uttarakuru to Fergana Valley is appropriate if we consider the northern branch of Tien Shan as part of the Nila mountains. The Mahabharat description of the Nila mountains is not detailed enough to decide between these identifications. Jambudvipa is explicitly mentioned as lying near Meru and implicitly to the south of Meru. Since the whole of Ilavrata has to lie between Nishadha that is Kunlu and Nila that is Tien mountains. This has to lie somewhere in the southern part of the Pamir mountain complex itself. But the place names like Jammu indicate that this region extended further south up to the Jammu and hence included the Kashmir valley. The detailed description of Ilavruta with the central Meru region and regions defined diagonally to the east, west, north and south of Meru is not fully in harmony with the description of the seven varshas or the horizontal bands and the six mountain ranges spread in the east-west direction. These two descriptions seem to have come from two different geographical data sources which Sanjaya blended together. With the Meru identified as the Pamir and the Malyavan identified as the southern mountains of India, Jambudvipa becomes roughly the same as Bharat Varsha. We have also seen that Jambudvipa in its expanded definition may be identified with Bharat Varsha but in its restricted definition has to be identified first within the Pamir complex itself to the south of Pamir that is Meru, second with the regions to the south of Pamir up to Jammu and third with the regions to the south of Pamir up to the Ganga river basin that is Uttarapatha. Then he explains the seven Kula Parvatas, that is the major mountain ranges of Bharat Varsha. These are Mahendra, Malaya, Sahya, Suktiman Rukshavana, Vindhya and Pariyatra. Malaya mountain is the southern part of Western Ghats in Kerala. The northern part of the Western Ghats to the north of Malay is the Sahaya mountain range. The parts of the Eastern Ghats in Odisha are the Mahendra mountain range. The mountains of Jharkhand is the Rukshavan mountain range and the mountains of Bundelkhand is the Shuktiman mountain ranges, both of them to the south of the Ganga river basin. The mountains in Rajasthan, currently known as the Aravali range, are the Pariyatra mountain range. The data containing the names of the rivers of Bharatvarsha is very dense and spread across 24 shlokas. 
the entire data when tabulated yields around 150 rivers the data containing the names of the provinces of bharatvarsha is similarly dense and is spread across 32 shlokas when tabularized we get around 220 kingdoms or provinces which covers every portion of bharatvarsha around 150 provinces are mentioned first then 45 southern provinces 10 northern provinces and 15 provinces ruled by non kshatriya rulers are mentioned spectral analysis of each of the nouns occurring in the epic shows how many times a noun is repeated in each of the 18 books of mahabharata around 100 names of villages towns and cities are analyzed from the data on the forests mentioned in the mahabharata around 30 forests are identified and analyzed from the data on the lakes mentioned in the mahabharata around 30 lakes are identified and analyzed from the data on the mountain ranges and the peaks in the mahabharata around 80 mountain ranges and peaks are identified and again analyzed the data on the geographical regions in the mahabharata reveals about 60 geographical regions that are identified and analyzed around 300 tirthasthana or the pilgrim places are identified and analyzed based on the analysis of these extensive geographical data detailed maps of bharatvarsha are created at the province level and the villages towns and the city level details the intensive geographical data from the mahabharat evinces the travel accounts and the overall expanse of ancient india with a plethora of kingdoms lakes rivers and cities spread all across the subcontinent this data acts as a piece of strong evidence to determine the veracity of the events mentioned in the great epic in our other videos we will discuss the astronomical references mentioned in the different parvas of mahabharat and how these references can be used to find a possible date of the mahabharat war till then stay tuned stay educated and last but not the least know your culture by self investigating the truth shubhaste pandhanas santu jai hind jai bharat